Hello, Made to Thrive Nation. I've got one of my favorite guests. He's a return guest on the Made to Thrive show. He is the greatest biological dentist in the world. He's got so much experience. I've learned so much from him. We've had him on the show before. We'll put his book up. I've got a little background here, but it's called It's All in Your Mouth. Let me do it like that. You can see it coming and going. It's All in Your <laughs> Mouth, Biological Dentistry and the Surprising Impact of Oral Health on Whole Body Wellness. He's an incredible scholar. He's a practitioner. Welcome back to the show, Dr. Dominic Nischwitz. Thank you, Steve, for having me again. It's a pleasure. It's my pleasure. Yeah, yeah it's so cool. Now, Dr. Dominic, I really want to just build a huge narrative or story for the listeners because biological dentistry is still its infancy here in South Africa and Africa and beyond. And I really want to take people along a journey. And so I want people to relate to stories, real people. Things that you've done in your life, you've got an incredible career of so many years as a biological dentist and a naturopath. For the listeners out there, is a naturopathic doctor as well. So give us a story, maybe a male, maybe a female, an athlete that people can really relate to. I'll give you a couple of stories. I think that's the best forward. And this is actually also the, the part that fulfills me as a biological dentist, because what we are trying to do is conventional dentistry is only focusing on repairing any like the mouth, like basically repairing teeth, fixing bites and smiles and uh, maybe aesthetics. But what we do is also the high tech dentistry, but we combine it with functional medicine and integrative health and health optimization or biohacking to really help people reach optimal health, which I believe starts in the mouth. So basically if people change overall, that's what's fulfilling besides the high tech techniques yes. and the first uh, patient that comes to mind is actually one of my first patients when it comes to the full concept because he came in it's about it's probably already almost 15 years ago but i will still remember him to this day he was only 25 years old and he just came for a for a random um, dental appointment to my assistant's doctor and he i don't know why they chatted about overall health but he said that for t for five years he couldn't sleep during the night, he would always wake up at the same time puking. And obviously, he was an athlete, he was a professional judoka, and he had to stop mm -hmm. training because if you cannot sleep, you get depressed. And he would see various doctors for five years that would only give him a diagnosis or basically told him that psychosomatic and they mm -hmm. couldn't find anything. And my assistant doctor back then told me, okay, told him, okay, let's see Dr. Dom. He might have an idea because he believes that health starts in the mouth. It's really that long ago. So I just had his x-ray and I re I, when, with one glance, I saw that there's one massive inflamed root canal on the, on the meridian for the stomach. And I just told him, I, I don't know if anything will happen, but we have a huge chronic inflammation here in your body. And we know that chronic inflammation is basically killer number one. And let's just take it out yeah, because it's anyway, it needs to go. And I did that, and I did just that, and and within the first night, he slept through the night. Wow. Within the next seven nights, he slept through the night and didn't puke. Then I saw him again, and he's like, yeah, it's fascinating. I slept for the last seven nights and five years before I wasn't able to. So we then optimized his overall health, and we also found out that he had a few critical snips. He couldn't detox very well. He was working with, like... He would, he would do stuff with metals for computers to earn some side money as a student, intoxicating him on a daily basis. So I basically put him on a nutritional protocol and the right supplements, gave him tons of chlorella to detox and bind these toxins and took out his tooth. And that was it. Wow. Five months later, this dude gained 10 more kilograms. His pale skin was gone. He wasn't depressed anymore. And he started judo again. So we gave him back his life. And I was like, wow, that is not mm. possible. And from there on, basically, these stories got more and more and more. So another one that comes to mind is when I was working as a, let's say, as a rock star surgeon, you could all you could basically book me for years to do your surgery. So I was flying in and out of clinics. And this one was at Paracelsus Clinic in Switzerland. It's quite a well-known clinic. You probably heard of it. it. Yeah. Dr. Thomas Rao is there. And there are a lot of overall medical cases coming. And there was this one, it was a queen from an Arabic country. And she came in with her whole staff of doctors, 25 doctors. And she had a paralysis, facial and abducens paralysis. So she looked like that. 
And obviously, as a queen, she would, would fly the whole globe to find somebody to cure her. Yeah. So she has really seen every specialist in this world and everybody was just giving her a diagnosis, facial paralysis or facial nerve paralysis, but no solution. And we were like, we were like already quite sure that there must be something in her mouth because the mouth is the extension of the brain. It's directly connected through the trigeminal nerve, which is also a cranial nerve. And if there's any chronic inflammation in the mouth, there's a correlation. So we did an X-ray and we said, we need to do a cone beam and we found six root canals, four cavitations, lots of metal. So basically the whole three health killers in her mouth. Nobody has even, never even told her about it. So, because normally if they consider, or if they consulted the dentist, the dentist would say, everything's fine because from his perspective, biting is just fine and aesthetics are also cool. Yeah. But what's underneath wasn't clear. So what we did, we did a neural therapy. Actually, Thomas Rao did the neural therapy and at the ganglia to make sure that it's really, that it really would make sense to do a surgery and already a few improvements within the first 24 hours. So we decided to do a surgery in full anesthesia. And I actually was only witnessing back then, um, even though I was surgery, the, the other surgeon did it. And we removed all the root canals, all the cavitations and the metals. And she woke up from general anesthesia and she was almost back to normal. Not oh. 100%, 80%. And obviously what happens is that a queen in the Arabic countries will offer you to open up a thousand of clinics throughout the, throughout the Arabia. We didn't do that, but this was another one. Yeah. Also, um, a lot of patients come in or nowadays, you know, that a lot of maybe even your listeners, one of five couples are not able to receive or get pregnant anymore. So it's it, hundred years ago. It was one out of hundred. Now it's one out of five. We already know that chronic stress is at the forefront and chronic silent inflammation is a biggie here. Mm. And I have so many women and actually I use it as a running gag because I always say I made so many women pregnant. <laughs> I only mean in a, in a medical sense, yeah, I have sure. one wife, that's it. but Corolla, for example, she came in and she just couldn't get pregnant. It wasn't possible. And I said, okay, there are again, health killers, the chronic inflammatory process in your mouth. Nobody has addressed them. So we will change your nutrition, your lifestyle, so that you support your overall healing before we even uh, start with uh, optimizing your health, starting in the mouth. And we removed the cavitations and we removed, I think, I believe it was only one root canal, if I remember correctly. And she got pregnant. I have that wow. testimony. I should send it to you because she allowed me to give this testimony to everybody. Wow. Because she couldn't believe it. She was trying for years and years and years. And sometimes it's just that one splinter you need to take out from your nervous system. You get out of chronic fight and flight and your body is able to get to rest and digest parasympathetic nervous system and conceives in a minute. And this happened a couple of times. Another practitioner, she would also be happy to give you a testimonial. Um, I, I lately saw her on Instagram because I follow her. And she came, she's, she's all, she's actually a doctor. She was a gynec, she was a gynecologist before she went to go the new route and become a naturopathic doctor. So she's both. And so she delivered a lot of babies, but she had a hard time conceiving again because of chronic stress overall. So she found out about cavitations and came in to see me. We did the surgery and I followed her on Instagram and she, she recently gave birth to a boy. Wow. Wow. And I was like, and I was like, wow, congrats. You have a boy now. And she, she just texts me back. I can send you that screenshot because I yeah. saved it. And she just said, I blame it all on you. <laughs> <laughs> because it happened exactly one week after we did our surgery. And I wasn't able before. And now we're finally there. And it was so fast. And thank you ever so much. And this is obviously fulfilling to me. Yeah, and if of course. You, it's, it's, not, it's not everything. So you have to see it like this. We are talking here at the Made to Strive um, podcast and all your listeners are already brief. You already optimize your health. You already have your nutrition on point. All these patients that come see me do that too. They're already quite optimized. Mm. They do everything they can, but still are not superhuman. And this is my take home message here is always, if you already try everything, but still something is holding you back, you're not to superhuman health yet then it's finally time to see a skilled biological dentist who can address 
chronic silent inflammatory triggers in your jawbone that are stressing you out 24 seven, burning out your adrenals, stressing your nervous system so you cannot heal, regenerate, receive, or whatever. So that's why we can have a case for every single symptom from depression through to autoimmune thyroiditis to irritable bowel syndrome, chronic fatigue. There's always a case because it's a big part of it. And the WHO, the, the World Health Organization, has said it last year, 70% of all chronic disease start in the mouth. Mm -hmm. And they only... They actually only look at the dental disease, which is periodontitis, gingivitis, and cavities. They don't even look at metals, root canals, and cavitations. And this is so fascinating because I've just coming back from a speech I gave over the weekend in Cologne, in Germany, the first ever integrative medical conference I was invited to, where mostly doctors were speaking internationally about chronic inflammation being the silent killer combining it with oral health. So in the audience, 150 dentists, but on the podium, mainly doctors, medical doctors and me. And it was like perfect because they were talking about diabetes. They showed research about COVID. So there's the newest researchers out there. Why we didn't know two years ago, why would some people that looked healthy mm. get COVID and die and some didn't? And now it's clear the studies are there. It's all about oral mucosa, oral barrier function. If you have periodontitis, chronic disease in your mouth, inflammation, metals, root canals, you just have more inflamed gums and the virus can go easier into your system already in the mouth. That's the difference. So I was like, wow, finally, wow. I knew it that oral health is that important. And you know, oral pathogens, you find them in the hip joints, oral pathogens go to your, to your heart. It's really the entrance to your body. And my goal is, is, or my mission is to help the many out there to see that this is the final piece or this is the biggest enemy to optimal health. Mm. Nobody even is talking about or knowing about it. And actually we can do something about it. And I believe I'm very grateful that I can speak to you and all the other game changers that really talk about it and yeah. help the many. You guys out there, you need to know all this. Absolutely. Well, that's a great summary. Well done. Incredible stories of changing people's lives. You know, we transform lives. And obviously, we here as practitioners to ensure people optimize their health and their wellness and prevent disease. And I think that's really, really important. The listeners know how we want to prevent disease before chronic disease comes into the picture. But I want to take people on a bit of a framework. I think those are wonderful stories that people can relate to because I, a question I have about the stories is do you check the inflammatory markers first like HSCRP, interleukin-6, interleukin-10, you have a look at oxidative stress sort of figures before you look at the cavitations or are you just saying that anyone with cavitations should look to deal with those cavitations? Both. We are actually, we don't look at all the cytokines because it's just um, a bit too much in my opinion, because it's obvious that there is something. What we do is we always check HSCRP and a few critical markers. There's a specific blood work that we would do before we even see the patients when they're already on their nutritional protocols. But before we do anything in the mouth, we do the same blood work within three months, within six months, and uh, basically parallel to all the healing to see okay. if what we're doing is already giving us a big amount of results because it's the literature is quite clear already. I'm not just talking about cavitations, it's about all the health killers. So metals will always lead to more infl inflammation. Mm -hmm. You just Google or you just PubMed metals and inflammation and you will find all the research you need. You will know that metals have no functions in your body and that some that we use in dentistry are even super toxic. So this is just common sense. Root canals are linked to depression and a low quality of life, increase oxidative stress, and obviously raise the chronic inflammatory cytokines like TNF-alpha, IL-6, NF-kappa-B, all the, the known ones, as well as cavitations. And cavitations, which is the layman's term for a fatty degenerative osteonecrotic jawbone, come with a, with, a, with a specific chemokine. They also have the same cytokines involved with chronic inflammation, but they have a specific chemokine, which you find in medical literature under the name CCL5 or RANTES, R-A-N-T-S. CCL5 stands for chemokine lignin-5. 
And if you, for example, do a Google Scholar, a Google Scholar search or a PubMed search for CCL5 plus XYZ diagnosed, let's say CCL5 plus multiple sclerosis, you will find 3,000 references in a second, which means in medical world, they look for this specific uh, chemokine, but they cannot find it. Because in dental world, there is actually a cause as chronic inflammation, the cavitations, but no dentist knows about it because this is something you are not trained in university. This is mm -hmm. something that a lot of dentists still believe is woo-woo, even though it's there for years. And Dr. Lechner from Germany, a good friend of mine, he's doing research about this for 40 years. He even has a paper showing that chronic inflammation in your jawbone with Ranti's overexpression can can um, lead to breast cancer or even correlating to it as well as thomas Rao is saying that he had it's just empirical but he's still with all his patients that had breast cancer he would find a root canal treated tooth with an inflammation chronic apical periodontitis on 94 percent of all his breast cancer patients on the adjacent meridian which is the stomach meridian whereas with his healthy population only 30 percent Mm -hmm. It is not causation, but it's a strong correlation. Yeah. And this is always, as you understand, chronic inflammation, chronic disease is multifactorial. That's why I say it's everything. But here, this is the entrance to your system. Your gut that we all talk about starts here in your mouth and it ends here. And therefore, if something is unhealthy in your mouth, basically, if your oral health sucks, your overall health will suck. That's yeah. just in, just pretty simple as that. And unfortunately, the definition of what can suck is not just about biting. It's also about what is hidden in there and yeah. that nobody talks about and that you might not even know because you have nice looking teeth because the dentist is easily able to put a nice cap on top of your rotten root canal. No problem. So root if someone is a business, right? No, sure. And, and that's why I'm asking because I think there's a lot of people that understand metals and amalgams and sort of the socioeconomic group that I deal with, they, they won't go for the mercury or they've heard about it and they remove it, whether they do it safely or not. You know, the amalgams is another story and we can discuss that. But And some of them will not do root canals, but many, many of them have had wisdoms out or teeth out and now they're cavitations. But they come to me, we do full functional blood tests, they have their aura ring, their sleep data, they're pretty good. They say, how can I optimize my health? And I send them to my biological dentist, Dr. Rocha's brilliant. I've been with him for many, many years, incredible, well-trained, been overseas to Switzerland, part of biological dentistry sort of organizations and that. And they say, oh, well, now I've got a cavitation, but I don't have any systemic problems. The inflammatory markers are good. They're feeling strong. Aura data is good. No bleeding glands, no you know, uh, any sort of inflammation or periodontitis, should they still remove those cavitations? Is that something that you recommend? Depends. So I personally want to be healthy on all levels. So if I knew there's a chronic inflammation, even though my body is compensated quite well, I would still go for it because I'm looking for the edge. So for example, I even did surgery for my own brother and also my whole family, actually. And they are quite optimized. So my brother really is good. And he's like, okay, we have that. We have a cone beam done. They have huge cavitations. It's chronic inflammation. We also did a cavitao scan, which is a um, ultrasound of the jawbone. So another diagnosis. And he was like, just, okay, I'm quite good. There are maybe some things I could optimize, even though I'm compensating very well, like my gut. Let's just do it. And my brother said, it is the next 10%. It was the next 10% because he, what he realized instantly was he would need an hour less sleep with the same aura ring data. So that means for him personally, if he can have the same amount of energy with less sleep, you, you, the body needed to deal with it through yeah. uh, with more sleep and probably compensating for about 25% of energy. So that was a good Good insight and also his gut. So the cavitations are usually from wisdom tooth removal. And if you look at the energy system, the energy meridian or the tooth meridian chart called odontone, every tooth has a specific correlation to a meridian or to the autonomic nervous system. That's and right. the wisdom tooth area is specific for the small intestine and heart meridian, which is directly connected not just to, to these two organs, but also to your adrenal glands and to your central nervous system. So this is basically where everything gets switched over. 
And if you have a chronic stress there, something will not work optimally, even though you're compensating quite well. So I'm personally also compensating really, really good quite well. But my own case was I had everything on point, like the whole concept using like biohacking, what you call now, I would do the health optimization. I would do that for 20 years now and perfect diet, everything on point, but still I was stressed out. I was grinding at night like crazy. It was cramped up like this and I had massive eczema. And obviously, if you have something on the skin, everybody is talking to you straight. It's like, hey, you have skin eczema, you have acne, whatever. Yeah. Your diet sucks. And I was like, no, it's yeah. all on point. I even have my nutrition specific. There is something wrong. I don't know what it is. I'll find it out. We did my, we, by chance, we um, we did a cone beam and I found, wow, I have cavita huge cavitations. And we, I'm, I was just, let's say I was patient zero. And we, I, I wanted to see what happens. So during surgery, while he was still in there, I was feeling that my chronic back pain in the middle of my back was just disappearing. I, I, would I, I had to laugh. I was like, is that even possible? I'm very sensitive guys, so I know my body. I'm an athlete, I do that for years, so I know everything. It's like, that's not possible. And I was already before, we checked hormones and everything. I had a high cortisol level, good adrenal glands probably. And I was already a little bit nervous. The nervousness in the morning where I just thought, oh, maybe hopefully I don't get Parkinson's or whatever in the future because I'm a dentist. It was, it was just, it just disappeared on the next day. And when we finally did the whole, all the four cavitations, my chronic skin issue, my eczema was just gone within five days. I felt like Dr. Hauschka model or like a, a model for a natural skin cream because it was just perfect now and everything was gone. So I realized it was a combination of chronic inflammation that was correlating to my gut system, making me basically intolerant to almost all foods. That's why I was just basically eating paleo autoimmune back then, mm -hmm. because otherwise it would just get bloating all the time, which you would call irritable bowel syndrome. I just didn't give myself diagnosis. I also had this, this shakiness, a little bit of autoimmune issues already with the skin and high adrenal stress. So cortisol load on top and actually it's high cortisol that high stress could explain everything in itself already my cramped up my tense my what is this me being very tense like highly sympathetic dominant and lots of inflammation just find wow. a way and if you have this experience on your body i have the moral obligation to tell it to my patients i'm just that guy i cannot keep it for me so it's like wow I have experiences on myself i have seen so many patients i cannot just hold it back this is why in my clinic it's a it's kind of like bed and breakfast it's always included if if you come in and people come in from all all, all over the world to see us like it, mostly actually internationally we would always plan the full case no cavitations no root canals we do ceramic implants instead and metal removal safely why because this is all unnatural and this is not how you came out of to this world out of your mom i basically just help your body get back to where it was or how it came out because you didn't come to this world with removed wisdom teeth or cavitations or root canals or metals so basically that i'm just helping your body heal itself by taking out these splinters that are deeply engraved into your nervous system fight and fly 24 7 some people have that for 30 years leading to chronic toxic vagal syndrome actually and so they don't even have any parasympathetic system anymore it's really and insane and when yeah. you do all these things and you check out the cavitation, sort them out, what happens to heart rate variability? What happens to their sympathetic nervous system and their parasympathetic nervous system? Has this been documented or their adrenal health, their DHEA cortisol ratio, you know, these things, oxidative stress, you know, we're looking at a very important marker that Dr. Thomas Levy spoke to me about the cardiologist who wrote the hidden epidemic, which is incredible. He taught me about T3 to reverse T3 ratio how yes. important that is from an oxidative stress point of view and that have been greater than 20. And I've been doing it with my patients now and there are many, many people that have normal thyroid health, they have a normal conversion of T4 to T3. But when we look at the ratio, they're not on any thyroid medication like your thyrox or anything like that. And when we look at the ratio, there's a problem with the T3 to reverse T3 ratio. So what happens to the, the, the data once you clean up the mouth? So I, I believe that you will see high reverse T3 because high reverse T3 is always a combination of chronic infection and toxins, um, which basically um, 
lead to a poor thyroid conversion, like, or let's say a poor thyroid activity. Mm. And I'm not doing these, um, these blood work specifically for everybody. This is what mm. I do with most of my practitioners that work with me. But I'm working on actually building a new facility right now in the backyard where, we'll, where we will implement all these ongoing strategies okay. and more blood work for functional medicine. Um, because everybody will have a reverse T3 problem if there's chronic inflam inflammation, toxins, and infections in your mouth. It's just that's just as secure as if you say amen in church. Like it's just <laughs> totally, just totally the usual business. And you would see it like this, but you need to have a few skilled uh, functional medicine practitioners that work with you, like everywhere, to make sure that is all diagnosed and very well documented. And and what about the aura data, like the HRV yeah, data? Yeah, yeah. Does that improve? So, not everybody has an aura. I personally have, and a lot of my clients actually do use aura or the whoop strap, Ooh, yeah. like whatever, like any sort of let's say variable. And we did a lot of uh, research in the clinic. We had a, uh, it was a, it was an old school heart rate variability yeah. tool called Vital Monitor, where we would measure before and after. And what you could see during this phase of surgery, your heart rate variability will always tank a little bit because obviously it's a little bit of stress, but you come out positive on the other side. Wow. Now it depends. Now it depends. I see the aura data or the HRV very specific um, because I need to know what is my data showing me? Most people that come see me are in a higher sympathetic state. Most, let's say 80% yeah, are more sure. to, let's say the average, I always look at the trend of the average nighttime of an aura, for example. Let's say they are having a average nighttime of, let's say 20 to 40, which is on the lower side, more like 20 to 30. Now I need to see, okay, are these people extremely sympathetic because of their stresses or is it a combination of their innate heritage because some people are more I, I combine it with a body typing so i will also look at the person that presents so if i can see is a it is a ectomorph person they are usually a little bit more sympathetic dominant anyways and then i can see okay it's more sympathetic because of the stressor and i assume you will be go a little bit more to a balanced body type for me personally i'm a mesomorph meso ectomorph and this personally fits when I'm healthy. My HRV is around about 60 on average. As soon as I get sympathetic or stressed out, it will go to 40. And when I was really sick, it will even go down to 15. And the same thing happens for chronic, chronic problems in your mouth. It's just that it's that the whole average trend is a little bit more to the left side mostly. So there maybe usually should be in between 40 to 60, but they are in between 20 to 30. So we ha I have to first see where they're going to be in the future. So this will take another six months to go back. And it's also depending on the nutrition and the individual food design that we give these patients after surgery is always strongly correlated to what you present. So there are a few critical patients actually that are in a high parasympathetic state, which is also not def ne necessarily poss uh, exactly. uh, positive. So they have an average of, 120 some even 150 obviously they are like this from nature so you can see those are more like people that would gain easily fat or like more like endomorph persons bigger dudes in chinese medicine you would say those are more like earth types maybe mm. but they can also go to more parasympathetic so they will be let they will be even more lazy no more adrenaline nothing at all and cannot heal so both yeah. sides of the equation are not ideal and what we want to achieve is that we are able to harmonize and balance in between two branches sympathetic and parasympathetic in a quick second yeah, so exactly. i will be sympathetic probably all the time when i do surgeries because i have to be 100 concentrated i cannot believe that i would be in parasympathetic mode that would make no sense yeah exactly but actually i have no problem with being adrenaline junkie and having yeah. high cortisol so i'm probably used to this but as soon as I go home and relax and go out of the clinic, I'm in parasympathetic. Yeah. So I can easily move and switch. But I couldn't when I had my chronic inflammation in my job. And that was just not possible. I had to grind through the night. I was super tense. It's really, I was really like this already. Like my whole, my whole, what is that? The secondary um, breathing musculature, my scalini, like my traps, they were all 
like this. I'm over exaggerating a little bit, yeah. but it really felt like that that my neck would um, get six centimeters longer because my whole shoulder girdle just came down. And this is what we see during surgery a lot of times that people are coming in tense, extremely tense, like sympathetic for years. They have no feeling over their body anymore. They're in fight and flight mode. They're basically not feeling anymore. And within the whole week of um, health optimization starting in the mouth, they get back to their parasympathetic tone. Even while we do surgery, they get warm hands suddenly. They finally can breathe. Their diaphragm opens up. The whole energy flows better and their pupils get very, very tiny. So it is really healing on the chair. And it's amazing. And this is still like for me, I've done over 5,000 cavitation surgeries. I have removed more than probably the same amount of uh, root canals and placed five more than 5,000 ceramic implants. But still, every single day when I have a patient lying there, I'm like, okay, you made it this far. You are on the same mission. While healing yourself or while we heal each other, we are actually inspiring the world out there to get yeah. better. And yeah. I want you to observe your body while we do surgery from the outside perspective and feel, finally feel. The only thing you focus on today when I do surgery is your breathing. You breathe through your nose, deeply into your stomach, on a count of four and you let go. That's the only focus you do and you feel, it, feel your body. And it's amazing every time when they tell me, or they sometimes they even start crying. Like instantly I open up a camera, they cry. I was like, yes, we have deep healing, parasympathetic activation, emotional trauma comes up. And this is why I don't do general anesthesia because I want to talk you through this. It's a healing journey and it's amazing. This is the fulfilling part still. Every day, single day, it was like, let's see what happens because yeah. everybody's different. Brilliant. So just take us through a journey. I think you've given people the reason to really care. They need to care about their oral health. They need to be really proactive to learn about the things like mercury amalgams, the metal that doesn't belong in your mouth, not to do root canals, be aware of cavitations. Take them through the journey. Obviously, you need cone beam, the 3D x-ray. So what someone should do, they're listening now and they say, okay, listen, I need to look at my oral health you know, then we'll do a bit of a home care, what they need to do. I, I was introduced by Dr. Brownstein. You know, I met him in terms of uh, IV hydrogen peroxide. I started using a water pick with hydrogen peroxide. I don't do flossing with hard flossing anymore. It's been great for my gums. My gums are in better health. But take us through the sort of process. Someone's listening now of diagnosis, how cavitations work. Some of my patients have been scared about IV antibiotics if they get an infection with the you know, with the cavitation, but just take us along your journey. Okay, the first question, just to summarize everything is for you guys out there, ask yourself three questions. Have you ever had any metal in your mouth? Ever had a root canal? Or your wisdom teeth removed? If any of the answers is a yes, you definitely need to see a biological dentist in the future. But obviously we can start optimizing up front. So the journey, if you want to see us, for example, or any... Um, trained specialist is that we need a current panoramic x-ray not a 3d we don't need a cone beam right now we just see the panoramic one to just diagnose it and then we will pr plan your case preliminary and then obviously before you come see us we will start optimizing <clears throat> your nutrition and your lifestyle because i don't want to have you in our clinic in hibernation mode which most pa patients out there are unfortunately i want you i want you to be as boosted as possible when it comes to macros and micronutrients. So you come in fully prepared and then the journey when you hear in the, in the clinic, let's say the health starts in your mouth journey is obviously that we will do blood work. We will do a full clinical examination. We will then take a three-dimensional x-ray, a cone beam when you're here to fully diagnose everything. We will also do an ultrasound scan to see further lesions and then we will just do whatever you need dental wise. Obviously, remove the metals under safely, which is a sevenfold measurement. Then we will do the surgery, which is as minimal invasive as possible. We use piezo surgery locally and ozone. We will draw blood and spin it to make PRP membranes that we later use in your mouth. So we basically do everything that's high tech. We remove obviously all the root canals, that's my specialty and place ceramic immediate implants, no metals, no titanium. And then you will have some temporaries. To make this whole concept even more round, you will receive a ton of different IV nutrients. We even put laser into your veins 
LLLT, low level laser therapy, which basically enhances or turbocharges your nutrients and your healing. We also have a hyperbaric oxygen chamber in the clinic. We have an infrared sauna. We use every modality from biohacking that you can imagine, even, even microcurrent frequencies. Um, in the future, we'll also have an acupuncturist coming in and, and an osteopath during that week. And make sure that you learn as much as possible about your health journey and give you all the tools. You will also be prepared with an onboarding online course that I've designed so that you know everything. And when we meet in person, we can really go deep and I will make you to become the architect of your health by starting in the mouth. And whatever symptom you imagine right now, unless it's not optimal health, there is a strong correlation to, to overall, uh, overall health and um, oral health. Whatever it is, we talked about pregnancy, not getting pregnant. It can also be menopause and oral health, testosterone optimization and oral health, estrogen and oral health, skin health and oral health. There is always a combination. And this is what we finally need to understand, that the mouth is a big part of your body. It's the entrance. Whatever you do in there or on your teeth is working systemically and can do the whole issues that could, cut, could start from the mouth or can be from an outside. It's just an epigenetic stressor, but it's installed in your mouth 24 seven and you cannot biohack your way around it. You can just compensate it by doing as much optimal health strategies that you can and you should. But this is one final part that is missing. Sure. Wow, that's comprehensive. Though. That is uh, looking at the full package there between the surgeries, the high tech, and obviously person taking accountability for their nutrition, their own lifestyle, you know, the outdoor living, the movement, the sleep, those things I think are crucially important. So that's well done. Now, what can the person do at home just from an oral health and cleaning? You know, like I said to you, obviously don't use any fluoride. The mouthwash that I use is totally natural, but maybe talk about hydrogen peroxide and a water pick or, you know, flossing, a brushing of teeth, how important that is with the process in terms of before they see you or during the process or even afterwards. So what I always say is three things you should avoid if you want to have optimal oral health. And this is fluoride, toothpaste, chemical mouthwashes, and flossing. Don't do that things. Those things are actually making it worse. You don't want to disinfect your oral microbiome on a daily basis with some chemicals or using fluoride. Instead, what we do or what we focus on when it comes to oral healthcare strategies is if you want to brush your teeth, use a toothbrush, a toothpaste that is as natural as possible. Because most toothpastes are not just fluoride. They contain titanium dioxide, E171, which is a white color. It's really an immune disruptor. It, they contain triclosan. They contain um, SLS which is sodium laurel sulfate, okay. basically a foam. The foam's so nice, but it's a foam in your mouth. There's also a lot of artificial sweeteners that, to make it taste sweet uh, because otherwise it tastes like crap. And you know, it, nothing tastes good after regular toothpaste. You cannot even eat anything afterwards. It just tastes so bad. But there's so many toxins in there that I would never put it to my mouth because I only want to put stuff in my mouth that I would like, like to eat actually because it gets absorbed. It even gets absorbed from your gum tissue. It's already skin, there's diffusion, and if you have any sort of inflammation, it will go in there. So no regular toothpaste, go as natural as possible. And I personally brush my teeth once a day, but I have to say that my diet and lifestyle are in check. So I have no plaque, no biofilm, nothing. And I also never had any dental work done besides orthodontics. I have no cavities, nothing. So my teeth are harder as stone, like stone hard. And this is how nature has it designed. But this is depending on your nutrition. If you still eat the standard Western diet or the standard crappy foods, you might, with all the convenient foods, might even have weak teeth and you might need to brush a little bit more often because you have more biofilm. Depends on you. I do it once a day. I use an electric toothbrush, but it doesn't actually matter. Then the second strategy, oral healthcare strategy, is called tongue scraping. It's it's an it's a ancient Ayurvedic strategy, and what you do is you basically scra scrape off the the bottom of your tongue, because overnight a lot of food debris, toxins, bacteria, viruses will kind of get stuck there, and generally a dentist will use a plastic tongue scraper. It's okay, but it's better to use a copper tongue scraper. 
Copper has also been shown to be antibacterial in itself. So in Ayurveda, you always have a copper, um, let's say a copper tub, where there's always fresh water in it to be disinfected from the bacteria. So copper tongue scraper would be a solid strategy to do that every morning or evening, depends on your uh, strategy. And the third one for oral healthcare strategies is oil pulling. Again, it's Ayurveda and Specifically, I would do coconut oil pulling because coconut oil, extra virgin coconut oil contains lauraic acid, which is a strong antiviral. And you just need that oil or that fat to, to take a, tea, a tablespoon into your mouth and just have it in your mouth and swish it gently around for about at least five minutes to 50 minutes. You could do that, for example, while you're cooking breakfast in the morning. It doesn't matter if you do it before brushing, after brushing, or even on its own. And you can also upgrade with essential oils, but just basic coconut oil will do the trick, extra virgin coconut oil. It will bind toxins. It will, again, be antiviral, antimicrobial purposes. But what is important is after five to 15 minutes, you should spit that out because it contains all that stuff. Sure. Don't swallow it. <laughs> it will be a problem otherwise. It, it's really also soothing to your gums. Yeah? Your gums is outside skin. It's like here, it's a barrier. It's, and if your gum is nice and clean and then it's pinkish, it's not red or inflamed or it's bleeding. It never bleeds. If it's bleeding, it's a sign of inflammation. It's called leaky gum. Everybody has heard of leaky gut. It's the same concept. It already starts at the entrance of your gut. And your mouth has a lot of pathogens. And this is how they find oral pathogens in your hip joints. Because if you have an inflammation here, Porphyronas gingivalis or strep mutans can just jump into the system and take it from there. As same as with the COVID virus. COVID virus will go, if, there's, if the barrier function is a little bit off, leaky gum, it just goes in easy. Instead of being perfectly um, repelled by your oral mucosa and the immune system that lives there. So you should never have any inflammation in your oral cavity. And this is also point number four, why I don't floss. Because be honest, most of you guys out there who use a floss will be. You already said it. Yeah. Because it's just so difficult to get that floss in between there without ripping. And it will cut open your gum. And what the, it's the same thing as always cutting your skin. Would you cut your skin twice a day and then hope that no bacteria goes in there? Yeah. Of course not. You produce a ton of inflammation and it's just unnecessary. That being said, if you had a ton of dental work done and you have crown work and there's a lot of food stuck in the teeth, you might need to do it. But with all natural healthy teeth like I have, don't do it. Mm. And what about instead of using the floss, which is what I've changed to, because sometimes, you know, you got a you got a piece of meat in here that's in there, yeah. you know, then you use the, the water pick and the hydrogen peroxide. Is that a better... Yes better option because water if you you know if you think of trying to clean something water is much much better to clean something than trying to scrape something you know when you yeah, scrape yeah. something the water just cleans it out you so if food gets stuck i would use a toothpick or water toothpick or or even a floss myself because mm -hmm. if food gets stuck in there it will also lead to inflammation and also it goes on your nerves so and that's why i said if you had dental work done fillings and whatever mm -hmm. you have done then you might have not the same anatomy as I have and you need to do some strategy. But a water pick is a great idea, but you not you will not have a water pick always with you. Yeah. So I think then it's still fine to just use a regular toothpick mm. to get it out. You just got to be yeah, gentle. I, I'm just, yeah, yeah, I'm just against using floss on a daily basis from morning to the evening if you're healthy. Makes no mm. sense. Yeah, so okay. It will, it will definitely, it will definitely not prevent initial cavities which is the common theory initial cavities is like in between these teeth that they see there's a white spot lesion on the on the x-ray the dentist and will tell you oh that's already initial cavity should floss teeth are so tightly together they actually grind each other if there's a white spot lesion that's a sign of an imbalance in your body it's a nutritional deficiency sign it's a sign of inflammation it's a sign of leaky gut it's a sign of chelation of minerals and you probably have a vitamin D3 deficiency and therefore a lot of mineral deficiency. You should, a good biological dentist will optimize your nutrition for that. But definitely don't, don't drill or, or will use floss. It doesn't make any sense. Oral hygiene, oral hygiene theory doesn't really add up. The theory is what Weston Dries already found out 100 years ago. 
nature has us designed beautifully. If we are living in a like in a natural environment, if you're growing up, if your mom was able to breastfeed you, if you eat all the foods, the whole foods that nature provides you, you will have a set of perfect 32 teeth. You will grow wide. You will breathe through your nose. Actually, breastfeeding is preparing all this. Breastfeeding will help your jaw to move forward. Breastfeeding will help you learn how to um, breathe through your nose. And um, then later on, the right nutrients that you need to build that house will be there. If you lack these nutrients and if you eat 50% of your calories from refined foods, like this is what the general food pyramid, pyramid tells us in the Western world. You should have yeah. 50% of our calories from highly refined carbs, yeah. which is basically um, wheat containing bread, pasta, cereal, maybe rice. So way too much energy that we don't even need and also the wrong one because you cannot find pasta on the tree or there yeah. is no pizza growing there. There's also no donut you can hunt. You should therefore look into whole foods yeah. and I'm talking animal proteins, I'm talking plants like vegetables, nice fruits. I'm talking about nature, nature is, nature's food, nature's pharmacy is food, but whole foods, not product. Yeah. yeah. Now, that's very, very good, Dr. Dome. That's amazing to look at it from such a holistic, integrative perspective. Just quickly before we end the show, our children, it seems like there's a lot of mouth crowding going on. And now I've got my daughter. She's six years old. You know, she still looks, unfortunately, my wife, for medical reasons, couldn't breastfeed. But it looks like her mouth is quite small. We obviously doing a lot of nasal breathing. I keep her nose open. I've taught her a lot of these things. But her mouth does seem quite small. And, you know, the sort of the pervasiveness of orthodontics, parents listening out there, obviously, they're going to do you know, the, the strategies, the oral health strategies you've mentioned, make sure that they don't do any of the things that they shouldn't, like the root canals and mercury and use ceramic fillings, go to a biological dentist. But what what is happening with our children, number one, in orthodontics and this mouth crowding and how and what can parents do? Basically, okay, you already said it. If, your mom, if the mom is not able to breastfeed for medical reasons, then we just need to know that because this is... Uh, like a lot of growing potential that was missed, yeah? But therefore you maybe need to upgrade her diet and nutrition even further because when you already realize, oh, she's growing too narrow, she probably has a lot of deficiencies, I'm sure that you already checked that her vitamin D3 level is probably okay. What is crucial is always animal protein or just say protein, they need enough, enough protein, but I'm sure you do that too, right? And so if you have the whole nutrition piece on point, like bone broth, eat the whole animal, eat the whole foods that you need, and she's still growing or your kid is still growing too narrow, it's actually a good strategy to go see a good orthodontist quite early because in the phase of growing, there is possibilities to widen the jaw with not braces, but with apparatus that you can remove. With remo I don't know the word in English. With removable appliances. Can you say that? Yeah. And therefore, these things can widen. Because it also can jump one generation, even though you have done everything correctly. So I, my wife breastfed all my boys for one for 18 months. Luckily, she was able to do 18 months and the last one actually for almost two and a half years. So not fully, but um, it was able. So they all breathe through their noses. And we also obviously optimize the nutrition for our kids. So they are allowed to eat crappy foods from time to time too, but they know... We are want to be superhumans. We want to be superheroes, and we need that food to strive. And if it's it's also sometimes okay to eat bad foods, but I believe that parents have the obligation if they know about it that they should teach their kids. And sometimes you have to be a father and be strict about it, especially if you know your kid is maybe gluten intolerant or mm. doesn't do very well with grains, and make sure that they get their nutrients first, and then maybe they can have their ice cream too. But I think this is important because the idea of the future should be that we are that we don't need a dentist actually for repair anymore. That we just teach our kids and the parents up front what is necessary to grow an overall healthy body and therefore also a overall healthy teeth and dentition. It's just one thing. It's building that house in which you live. Your body, you have a body. You're not your body, you know? And therefore, if you see it's already and narrow, I would also maybe go see an osteopath to help her with like the facial structures or the fascia 
maybe she's a little bit too tense. Could she could be if she comes after you? Could be a uh, from Chinese medicine. Could be a gallbladder um, liver type person, which has more tension anyways, mm. which sometimes leads to compression in the face. So ac acupuncture will also help. So whatever comes to mind when it comes to optimal health will help. And um, and then teaching a nose breathing. But I believe she doesn't do any pro-inflammatory foods anyway. So a lot yeah. of times when, we, when kids start to breathe through their mouth instead of their nose, which is, is actually um, an adaptation. It's most likely due to chronic inflammation in your, in your mouth and in your mucosa, which comes from food that you eat that you're not tolerate. It's most likely casein and gluten, actually, and could also be refined vegetable oils. But if the tissue gets swollen up, you cannot breathe anymore. Your body will naturally adapt by breathing through the mouth, yeah. which is a total bad sign. Yeah, If your kid already starts mouth breathing, in go trouble. see specialists and help, help with their nutrition first, lifestyle nutrition first. And it mostly sorts itself out. If not, they get like very bad tonsils. They get tonsil stones, all these things. And this is just me personally. For example, I had chronic tonsillitis as a kid. I would, my parents would give me a ton of antibiotics. And I'm not blaming my parents for this. I'm definitely not. They did their best. They didn't know better. I, was, I needed to become 16 years old and meet a naturopath who told me, because I, they wanted to take out my tonsils surgically, um, and this the trip has just tested me with kinesiology and said, oh, no, no, don't do that. You're just allergic to casein. Just skip the milk. And I was drinking and eating a ton of milk every day. Like I was growing kid. I needed milk. I thought at least yogurt, milk, milk, or whatever. And yeah, I left that and my inflammation was gone. Never had any tonsillitis anymore and still have my tonsils. So he only told me no more, no more milk products. And I obviously would eat a lot of the, the cream and chlorella, take chlorella. That's it. I did that. It took me another 10, 15 years to realize that I was looking for optimal health. But back then, this little strategy is still in my mind. I remember this day till this day I was, as it was yesterday. I was only 16 years old. I didn't want to go there, actually, because I thought my parents want to bring me to a quok or whatever. I was 16, teenager, you know. But I went to do that anyways. And it was the best possible thing ever because... I could initially feel the testings and had that same um, innate capacity. It was just resonating with me. Amazing. So I, from I, pain I, to I purpose, eh? Hey? From pain, your own pain, your own sickness, go and see someone, yeah. changes your life. You want to do it. It becomes your calling, your vocation. You've helped thousands of people. So, yeah, we yeah. absolutely salute you and just honor you and declare favor and blessing over you, Dr. Dome. Your inspiration looks like you're growing and developing Maybe just the last comment of hope with regards to biological dentistry. What is happening worldwide? I know you're the president of, I think, the implantology of ceramics. And I know that you've got a sort of a world view and perspective. What is happening in the world of biological dentistry? And give the, the listeners a message of hope. We are working on it. Um, and I, if there's anyone listening out there who is a dentist, a, I say a young and wild, open-minded dentist who wants to learn all these strategies. I'm teaching for years now. We have a curriculum to become a specialist in biological dentistry and ceramic implants. I'm also having a new online course, which is onboarding for all my patients and dentists and nurses, which is basically a 10-day transformational journey where you meet me in person in this room where I, because I did that live and I wanted to see if it's possible to transform patients or their mindset and their beliefs by a strategy that optimal health starts in the mouth, so to speak. So this one is existing and should be the entrance. And then basically I'm working on teaching more and more and more to give the whole concept because the concept that I'm doing is I call it HSIYM or health starts in your mouth or actually optimal health starts in your mouth concept which is combining everything. It's the high-tech dentistry overlapping with functional medicine and health optimization. So you, need, you learn all my nutritional reg regimens, the designs. You need every, to learn everything on how to transform your clinic into a full-on optimization center. So that you in the future, not actually the hashtag will be not a dentist because you're not a dentist. I'm not a dentist. Like, Tim's, like Tim introduced me on the health optimization summit. Like, this dude knows everything about nutrition, functional medicine, this, this, and this. And he also is kind of not a dentist, really. And that's when I then when it dawned to me, it's like, oh wow, there is a there's an audience with yeah. 500 people 
that are already optimized. And I asked the same question that I asked you guys already, and the whole audience should stand up. Same on the last weekend. I asked all the dentists and doctors in that integrated medicine thing, stand up if you have metals, root canals, cavity, uh, wisdom teeth removed. The whole audience stood up. That means nobody knows about it. And this is why I'm here. I'm teaching this. And if there's any dentist or whatever, we are way too little. So I can only have 30,000 people with my bare hands for surgery. I need to train at least 1,000, better 10,000. Then we can help 300 million people. And this is the goal. Yeah, Help many, many, many millions. This is also why I do the Instagram and like yourself. Um, this is a lot of work to produce all the content for you guys. So that you learn, that's all about it. So I, like you said, I had my own challenges. Like the, the tonsillitis was only a minor thing. Actually, the next five years, I would crash my body big time, get a massive depression and was really in the lowest when I was early 20, had myself, dig myself out. So yes, I'm now happy to learn from my experience and from my hero journey because I know how it feels when you're chronic sick and nobody has a solution for you. But I didn't believe it. I didn't believe it. I knew I want to be normal again. Even though there was nobody helping me, I had to look for it. But I'm doing it for 20 years because of that. And now I'm happy and able to give that back. And this is why I'm here for. That's it. And this is why I align with all the other wolves to become a health, to be a health avenger that helps the many out there to become superhuman. Because this is what we are. From nature, we would be superhuman. But epigenetics maybe killed us a little bit. Yeah. And this is why we're here. Brilliant, Dr. Dome. Well, thanks for coming on to the show. Once again, declare favor and blessing over you that you would reach your calling and your purpose with such fervor and such zest and such zeal. It's such a privilege to know you. And yeah, we just, uh, hopefully you just get all the success that you've like worked for because I think you've got a real heart to transform people's lives and millions and millions of people I think are going to be uh, benefiting because you're willing to teach, you're willing to produce content, you're willing to do courses, you're willing to write books. And, you know, we'll put the links to your book again. Incredible book. So well done to you. Thanks. Yeah, actually, that's my mission is practice, teach and preach and inspire you guys out there. Because when we are all optimal health, imagine how amazing this planet would be. No naysayers, nobody's negative, everybody is just friends. Like when you go to a health optimization summit, you can just talk to everybody and everybody looks for solutions. Yeah. And there is always a solution, especially if you start your journey to optimal health. And I would do that in the mouth. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. All right. <laughs>